said on video conference meeting procedures. Brian, are you with us? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'll leave it to you to begin the meeting. Okay. Uh, thank you, Scott. This is Brian Yates with Sports Page and Harding. Uh, welcome everybody to the Montgomery County Mud number 36 Board of Directors meeting for Wednesday, March the 17th, 2021. Uh, appreciate everyone being able to attend the meeting remotely this evening. As in prior meetings, I'll briefly go through the remote meeting procedures and then we'll perform the roll call. So to begin with, need to remind everyone the meeting is being recorded as required by the Texas Open Meetings Act. Second, please remember to state your name before you speak, including the making of any motions. When you're not speaking, please be sure to mute your line. Third, we'll continue the practice of having a roll call to vote on each motion. After a motion has been made and seconded, please wait until you hear your name called and then respond with a verbal aye, a nay, or an abstention. Finally, we need to identify each person who's joining the meeting remotely today so that we can accurately reflect the attendance and the minutes of the meeting. I'll perform a roll call for the board members, followed by consultants. When you hear your name or company called, please respond by indicating that you're present in the meeting. Likewise, if you need to leave the meeting before it adjourns, please announce that you're doing so before you disconnect. Once I've completed the roll call for directors, staff, and consultants, I'll ask for any members of the public to identify themselves for the record. So starting with our board of directors, Scott Haynes. Present. Jan Price. Present. Amy Polk. Present. Sheila Faxel. Absent, John Yours. Present. That completes the roll call for our directors. Um, this is Brian. Actually, I think we need to take off on the first page of this. I was thinking that Sheila had already formally resigned, which she did. We've got that in the minute. So uh, we'll need to just take her off and, uh, of the uh, front page of the director packet and list, list her position as vacant. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, Woodlands Water staff members. Jim Stinson. Present. Mike Mooney. I'm here. Maureen Bourgeois. I'm here. Jeannie Scott. I'm here. Shelly Lawson Kennedy. Here. Yes. Any other members of Woodlands Water staff in the meeting? If not, we'll move on to San Jacinto River Authority staff. Ron Kelling. Present. Chris Meeks. Present. Matt Corley. Present. Aaron Schindelwolf. Present. Any other members of San Jacinto River Authority staff in the meeting? If not, we'll move on to MUD 36 consultants. Do we have any MUD 36 consultants in the meeting? If not, we'll move on to members of the public. Do we have any members of the public present in the meeting? This is Chad Nobles with Amoresco. Okay, this is Brian. Do we have any other members of the public in the meeting? If not, that will complete our roll call. I'll go ahead and hand it back over to Scott to begin the agenda. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Brian. Scott, Scott I have a, a request to consider. We have a, an agenda item number 14, discuss sewer rates and water rates which is a carryover from last month. And we, we sent out a, uh, an example of what Amoresco could help uh, secure for us as far as a lease purchase. Did y'all get a copy of that from Shelly? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. And I just, and Chad's here to answer any questions you may have regarding that, but he's got another meeting that he's got to get to quickly. So if you would consider moving agenda item 14 up and allowing us to have that discussion. Uh, that's fine with me. Um, well, let's go and consider it now.
Uh, and, and Brian, you want to give a, a brief summary of your uh, review of that option for MUD 36 to consider uh, on uh, financing their meter project? Uh, this is Brian. Uh, happy to, Jim. So, board, we've we've talked about um, payment options for this wireless water meter project several times. You know, talked about just having a a fee on the water bills for a short period of time to be able to try to generate the cash necessary to pay for it, or potential financing options. Uh, have done some research on. Uh, different options that would be available to the district. And um, unfortunately, the options are, are fairly narrow. Uh, there are restrictions on the ability to uh, of a district to go and borrow funds privately from a bank. Uh, you're not like a, a city or, or some larger entity that may have some broader power via a, a home rule charter or whatnot. Um, instead, you're limited by what the water code allows um, and what the uh, the government code allows for uh, for financing. So um, there's there's not the ability to go and and just take out what would be a a line of credit or or a or a basic loan agreement. Um, the government code under Chapter 1371 has limitations there uh, in order to be able to uh, have that sort of arrangement. You need to have $100 million of issued or eligible to be issued outstanding debt, which of course, MUD 36 is nowhere close to that number. Um, you, you can do a, a lease uh, purchase agreement. Uh, and what Amoresco has provided is is one possible option. And I believe uh, Chad Nobles with Amoresco has advised Jim that there are some other um, options out there for the lease purchase um, option to be able to consider that as a repayment uh, mechanism. Uh, the information we received so far, I think it was from US Bank, uh, and it was that they had a five year payback period and a 10 year. Uh, the tenure didn't have quite the attractive uh, interest rate. The five-year um, had what seemed like a, a, um, a reasonable uh, rate option of 1.7%. The tenure was 2.38. But um, I think we would want to see a couple more. I think Jim was going to look uh, or work with Chad to get a couple more. So you've got three different options to look at. Uh, there was a little bit of a prepayment penalty if you paid it off before that five-year period of, of 3% of the remaining principal balance uh, would be a uh, early payment per, uh, penalty on the uh, lease purchase. But, um, but it looks like there are some options for you at, at reasonable interest rates for that. We'll just, once you um, find a, or, or uh, agree on a, option, then we'll need to get probably the uh, either Maureen or, your, or the financial advisor, we may be able to do this in-house to calculate what kind of fee or flat fee would be necessary uh, to be imposed as part of the water bill uh, to be able to recoup the amount necessary to make that annual payment. Um, and I'm I'm happy to answer any questions y'all have. Chad's obviously here as well. Chad, do you have any idea when we'll have those other two uh, alternative proposals? Well, there's, sorry, I was on mute. This is Chad Nobles. Um, I think Brian, you asked is, are there other options and who they may be? Is that correct? Uh, this is Brian. In visiting with Jim, it was my understanding that we could get a, a couple other uh, lease purchase options uh, from Amoresco to have for comparison purposes. Sure. Yes, sir. This is Chad Nobles again. Um, you know, we have in our market, um, when we do these projects, there are a lot of different banks, leasing agencies, lending, you know, groups that want to basically lend out money for to do these type of projects. It's probably the most common form of financing when we do these projects. And so um, we could easily reach out to several of those, get you a sample term sheet like this, 
um, from a variety of different folks. It could be anybody from Bank of America to a first security leasing to uh, government capital to, you know, Frost Bank to several different agencies that are out there that I know have funded. Uh, we simply went to uh, U.S. Bank. They have been we, we recently had a, about a $15 million project and then a million dollar project. And actually they came in lowest out of both of those. So we, we went right back to them and said, all right, you obviously were the lowest out of this. How about some more? Do you want some more of this work? And, and that's what they kind of gave us as this term sheet. So uh, we felt the rate was very good, very competitive. What I would ask if you can, if you want us to go back out and get a couple is to possibly narrow down the term. Yeah, this is Brian. I think, Board, that is a threshold issue is uh, what repayment period are, are you looking at? Um, uh, on that term. Yeah. Uh, so this is Brian. So, Board, what are your thoughts in terms of the uh, the, the term for this repayment period for the, uh, uh, the portion that would be lease financed? This is Scott. I think presenting a five and a 10 year term are the acceptable alternatives for uh, financing and would make it comparable to what you've already received for uh, other alternatives. Now, let me ask this, Chad or Brian, are you requesting that they pick whether it's a five year or a 10 year now? Or would the vendors be willing to, to submit a, a, a quote, if you will, for either five or, to, and, or for both, five and 10, and then let the board decide? Yeah, I think from yeah, my perspective- Brian, I'll turn that over oh, to, to, to Chad on that one, because I think you're the one who's going to be the direct contact with these lenders. Yeah, this is Chad Nobles. I, ideally, Jim, we'd like to be able to just go with one. But if we do need to ask for two, I don't have a problem of trying to get a five and a 10 year option if that's what the board so chooses. The, would it help to have maybe a letter from the, uh, the board or a letter signed by me on behalf of the board requesting here, here's the, you know, here's what we're requesting yeah. and here are the terms, would that be helpful? Absolutely, you know, and if you wanted, if I know Brian had mentioned, this is Chad Nobles again, I know Brian had mentioned that there was a prepayment. If that's something that you would like to maybe look at having an option to not have, we could also put that in that letter to say, hey, you know, I, what they would do is probably increase the interest rate slightly, um, but there could be an option to not have a prepayment clause you know, in the document, if that's something that the board so chooses. But yeah, Jim, you and I could work together, kind of draft what that looks like, and then we would just apply it and send it to several different lenders and say, hey, here's your couple other options or whatever options you guys wanted to see. And I think we're, <clears throat> this all doesn't have to be resolved tonight. It's just, we wanted to get it on the yeah. table to start the discussion. From, from our perspective, I think this is, um, a reasonable way to go. I, I, I don't recommend adjusting your water and sewer rates to try to, to cover this expense. It's just too unpredictable. We, we, we think that a, an add-on, a separate line item on your water bill uh, is, the, is the, the better choice, um, but we certainly uh, defer to the board's decision on that. But we're not looking for a firm decision tonight. We just wanna get some guidance. Uh, Chad Marine, the next payment for MUD 36 is at least how many months away, if not more, or for, for their portion of the, it's. This is Maureen, we've, we've deferred, uh, the meter replacement won't start in MUD 36 till the end of this fiscal year anyways, and it may even move to October depending on their, their rate of replacement. This is Scott again. I want to point out one thing real quick, uh, Brian. It looks like John yours has dropped out of the meet. Uh, okay. I don't want to really discuss much more without John here. But at the same time, let me let me ask this: if our, if we try to get 
this information, a quote from another financial institution, are we really just expecting to see a higher, higher cost, higher rates? I mean, if, if that's the case, I mean, I think these two, the two quotes from U.S. Bank, for me, are acceptable for all two alternatives. If we think, if that's what the opinion is, is that's the best rates we're going to get um, for us to spend for, and I don't know, will Chad have to spend money going out to get these these uh, additional bids? Um, I I don't see any. I, for me, I don't see much reason to continue the bid process if it's only going to come up with bids from other banks that are higher that we really won't consider in the end. I think a, an alternative of a five or 10 year lead, uh, program is acceptable for me for us, for our discussion purposes. I mean, I don't, I'm, it doesn't seem like it's going to be necessary to just get more alternatives that they end up costing more money. Yeah, this is Brian. I, I, I think it, it pro, it's it's a it's a good idea for the board. I mean, it is a million dollars, uh, and and I mean, even with construction projects that are over uh, uh, twenty five thousand dollars, you're supposed to get three uh, three alternative bids up to seventy five thousand, and you can't competitively bid this out. So I, I really do think uh, it's it's wise to get those alternatives. I mean. Chad may know from doing this a lot that U.S. Bank's going to come in uh, uh, the lowest, but I think it's good for you if you get questioned on it in the future uh, to be able to say that you did your due diligence and and had alternative um, term sheets. This is Scott again. I understand that that's fine with me. If that's the case. I guess I'm got wondering if we're going to get you know other banks going to give us different year terms and. You know, we got all kind of, it just cloud the, the, the decision with more terms, but I guess we'll just you, wait until we see that. You, you, and we can, we can control that. what we ask for. We'll, we'll control that where it's, we're comparing apples and apples. Okay. Correct. And this is Chad Nobles. I, that is correct. We will basically, when we go and request these other ones from these other firms, we will basically specifically ask for a five and a 10 year option. Um, and that way you have ones to, to uh, compare to, or at least, like you said, have your due diligence. It, it's, it, it is obviously something we'll let them know that they're competing. And so I just know from past experience, recent experience, U.S. Bank has been very aggressive with it. Um, I don't know, like on this one, it's a pretty small deal for Bank of America. So typically what we see from Bank of America, either A, they won't quote, or either B, their, comp their rates come in higher. But I have no problem reaching out to several of them and seeing if we can't grab uh, at least two other options for you for a five-year and a ten-year option. Yeah, this is Brian, and also with a with a no prepayment option uh, as maybe a uh, you know another as an alternative. Variable. Okay. Yeah, and ask U.S. Bank if they can provide a bid that doesn't have a prepayment penalty, just so you can see what that markup is. Sure, we can do that. When do you need these back, by? Uh, this is Brian, just the next board meeting. Okay, that's plenty of time. Okay, great. Uh, John, you're, John, you're back in uh, the, the meeting. We were just uh, talking about getting a, uh, a quote from three lending institutions uh, with the same parameters, one five-year, one 10-year, and maybe removing the prepayment penalty so the board could take a look at a at the at least three different lenders, if you will, next month. Okay, yeah, we, we still need to have a discussion about rates, though, sometime between now and then. Yeah, and I I, I don't know if you heard. I was just from our perspective, we, we think uh, if you're just adjust your water and sewer rates to try to cover this payment. Is, is a risky because you never know, that's not a, a guaranteed amount, but adding a, something, a line item to the water bill seems to be what we would recommend you consider for to, to collect revenue and repay this, but we can have a, a discussion uh, next well, month. I, I understand the um, adding a fee, but you know we're basically operating a month a month at a deficit 
in our finances because we've the first four months of the year we've had one hundred and seventy thousand dollars of tax revenue for the next eight months. We're not going to have any tax revenue, so we're going to be operating at a loss for the next eight months. So we have we have to deal with that some way. Okay, yeah, just just the purely the wholesale expense compared to the retail revenue you're getting in. That's right. Yeah, I, yeah. I got it. Yeah, we can't we can't run a business running at a loss every month, and and we're in that position right now. This is Scott. I have one last question. The term, the reference here is a uh, prepayment is permitted after 12 months at 103 percent of remaining capital. Prepayment would mean paying off the amount in, in total or in, is, is, the, is it available to pay a portion of it depending upon what funds come available? I think the intent was there if you prepaid the entire outstanding principal. I, yeah. I don't know what they could provide if you just made a partial payment over and above what your okay. uh, calculated yearly payment would be. Okay. All right, well, I, I guess the, the way to, to, to look at that is just remove the prepayment penalty and then you'll know what if, yeah. what's your interest rate. Yeah. All right, well, I uh, believe this, uh, is there anything else to address about sewer rates and water rates today? Jim, is, there any, is, this, is this all we were gonna talk about for item 14? Well, this was, I think John, what John is saying is there needs to be a broader discussion separate from the Amoresco issue, just about primarily sewer rates. Your sewer rates, your whole, your retail rates are not collecting enough to offset your wholesale expense, I don't think. So. Um, are we gonna discuss that tonight or, or are we gonna do that later in the meeting? We can come back to this agenda item, go ahead and let Chad go. And okay, that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll come back to item 14, discuss the rates at that time. Chad, thank you very much. Thank you, Chad. Yes, sir. This is Chad Noble signing off. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for moving me up, guys. Y'all have you. a good night. Yeah. We'll go back to the uh, standard items in the agenda. And item two is receive comments from the public. Um, I, we do not have any public uh, residents uh, here at the meeting that I'm aware of. Did, did anybody, Jim or Mike, do y'all have any comments from the public that we need to discuss at this time. This is my, I don't have anything. Um, there's a page 39 in our agenda that says agenda item, receive staff update on matters pertaining to implementation of automated metering infrastructure program. I don't see that in here in the, in the agenda numbers. Would this be the time to discuss this? This is about the poll. Uh, it's under the AMI. Um, well, I'll give it under the general manager's report. Okay, we'll do it at that time. All right, then we'll move on, we will move on then to item three, consider an act on request for adjustments to or relief from specific charges imposed by the district. Hi, Scott, this is Jeannie and I don't have anything. Uh, Mike, you don't have anything either? Mike, no, nothing this month. Okay. All right. In that case, we will move to the consent agenda. Um, do the directors have anything they wish to uh, review outside of the consent agenda? Do they, and we would want to remove, take it out of the consent agenda. And if not, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Make a motion we approve the consent agenda. A second, motion's that been, Dan. Motion's been made and seconded. We will now vote uh, on the, to approve the consent agenda. Scott Haynes, aye. Jen Price, aye. Mamie Polk, aye. John Yours, aye. This consent agenda is approved. We'll move to the regular agenda, item nine, consider appointment of new director to fill vacancy on the board of directors. I do not have anyone at this time. Does anyone have any people that they've 
would want to consider for the vacancy on the board? I do not. This is John. Brian, what's the, what's the procedure on this? How soon do we have to, is, is it best to replace the, uh, our vacancy? Uh, this is Brian. You don't have quite the um, rush from a legal perspective that you had in years past. A few sessions ago, the legislature uh, removed that, uh, that shorter time frame. I can't remember what the, I feel like it was around 90 days, 60 or 90 days. Uh, but that was changed because if you went over that time period, what the statute used to say was uh, the TCEQ must appoint the replacement after that period. Uh, now that language that has been changed to the TCEQ may. So you still got discretion outside of that old old time period to be able to replace your director. Uh, so you don't have quite the, the legal uh, constraint that you had before. But now it's just the practical constraint of making sure that uh, you have three or your four directors instead of three or your five directors who can attend a meeting and make a quorum. This board hasn't had a problem being able to make quorums. So that's probably not a, uh, a real life issue for y'all. Um, so, you, you know, if you need to take some more time to make sure that you find the right candidate, uh, I don't think there's any need to uh, just rush it just to get somebody, just to get a warm body in the seat. Brian, is, in, a few years ago, I suggested somebody and we found out that they were not able to replace because they had been a candidate in a recent election. Is there anybody at month 36 that is unable that would that have that that would have that restriction that they could not serve on the board we appointed them? Uh, that's that is if a director has resigned or been defeated in an election within the last two year period. So obviously you couldn't reappoint Sheila. Um, Right. She would be ineligible under that provision. I don't recall. I can't recall if y'all had a contested election uh, within the last two years that the uh, that would make the person who lost that election ineligible to serve. But that would be it. Okay. Um, uh, that that person was Sharon D. Marseille. I may give. I may try to contact her, um, but. We if if we don't have anybody else to come up with a recommendation, um, we'll be, you know, y'all have to decide if you would want to approve whoever does get brought up. We so. had a candidate. This is Jan. We had a candidate a couple of years ago, same time Sheila was appointed, who might be still interested. Okay. I I remember her name. I'm not hesitant to say it, but. Uh, would Jan, would you be comfortable co contacting her? Sure, I'd okay. be happy. Um, I would, I would encourage you to to contact her. Um, okay. The person I was referring to, I would be a little embarrassed after I already rec told her that to we had a position, and then she was told she couldn't do it. So, um, if you don't mind contacting her, and then see if yeah. she could provide some information so we can discuss it. Okay. I don't. I the re reason I'm saying bring talking like this is I don't think we need to put this off. I think it's it's something that we should uh, try to take care of as soon as possible in a timely manner. It's not as soon as possible in a timely manner. Right. Any other discussion? All right. Well, and if anybody else thinks it's so, in the meantime, please tell them. Contact them and let them know that they can be considered. And that means that they either reside in the district or mm -hmm. own property in the district. Correct, Brian? This is Brian. That's correct. Okay. All right. Is there any more discussion? Now let's move to item 10, receive the attorney's report. Hello, Brian. Good evening, Scott um, and board. A few items to cover with y'all tonight. Um, first, as I'm sure all of you know, the governor did uh, roll back his mandatory mask restrictions and business restrictions that have been in place uh, since last summer. 
uh, those restrictions were rolled back on March the 10th last Wednesday. There were some questions that came up uh, about whether or not the governor's actions last week impacted his disaster proclamation that suspended the in-person meeting requirements under the Texas Open Meetings Act. We have been in contact with the governor's office about that issue and have confirmed uh, with his office that the uh, actions taken by the governor do not impact uh, the disaster proclamation in any way. And so we remain in a remote meeting environment at this time. Uh, Jim will cover under the uh, uh, general manager's report uh, efforts that he's taken to uh, put the Woodlands MUDs in a position to be able to uh, potentially hold in-person meetings uh, in the future, but we're not, we're not there yet. Um, so that's one item. Next item is you should have received an email from Shelly on Monday that had clean and red line copies of the construction 10 or con 10 policy. Uh, as I think we've talked about over the last couple of months, uh, one of the boards did ask us to take a look at that policy since it hadn't been updated since 1995 to see if there were any changes that should be made to the policy. Um, we are, uh, recommending some changes at this time that are primarily uh, geared to have the policy include more direct statutory references to the applicable laws that uh, govern the construction of projects and the reimbursement of developers for those projects. The original policy was developed way back in 1976 and then was updated in 95 and it uh, for the most part, just regurgitated the statutory language in the body of the policy, uh, which over time can become a problem because the legislature can modify those statutes and the language in those statutes, and it makes the policy itself become outdated. So uh, what I've tried to do is include less uh, regurgitation of statutory language and more references to statutes so that the policy becomes more evergreen uh, uh, in that if the legislature modifies the statutes, it'll pull, it'll keep, uh, the, the policy will continue to be um, current and accurate because it, it just references the, the uh, individual statutory references. So uh, made those changes. Also in going through it, noticed that the uh, term of the policy agreements was a five-year period and that's not industry standard i don't know if back in 1970s when the policy was first developed if it was somewhat reasonable for a construction project for public infrastructure to be uh get a reimbursement agreement get that uh construction completed and then create the taxable value necessary for a bond issue uh, for all that to happen within a five-year period but that's not uh, that's not typical um, uh, today, and probably wouldn't even uh, be uh, feasible within the woodlands. So the typical time period for all of our other uh, district clients is 15 years, and it's renewable if necessary after that. So I've updated the term uh, of the content letter agreements to be a 15-year period as opposed to a five. Uh, and that's really it for the content policy. We're not recommending any action by the board tonight. It's just for discussion and to answer any questions. Um, because it is a uniform policy, it does have to be approved by all the MUDs, even though there's only a small handful that have potential future development uh, that I don't think includes MUD 36 at this point. Uh, but we will have an item on next month's agenda to consider approval of the updated policy. Um, so happy to answer any questions y'all may have on that. And I'll pause there before I touch on the last item under the attorney's report. Any questions for Brian related to the, uh, the document? Okay, uh, last item is you may be aware that there's a fiber optics contractor making its way through the woodlands that's um, leaving a path of destruction uh, as it works to install the fiber optics. It's uh, it's breaking water and sewer lines 
throughout the community. There's been over 100 uh, instances of damage so far, and they're not fully ramped up yet uh, at this point. They've got about half of the total number of subcontractors that they'll ultimately have on this project in the woodlands. They're at around 50, and they're planning to have over 100 uh, once they're you know, fully mobilized. Uh, the damages though so far north of a hundred thousand dollars. So uh, Jim and I have visited about the issue several times. Uh, we have engaged. Uh, Woodlands Water has engaged outside litigation council. Um, Jim has met with Commissioner Nowak. Has met with the contractor Takis one time. Is meeting with them again tomorrow. Uh, if there's not a resolution on the number of issues that we have with TACUS and how they're uh, conducting their work throughout the community at that meeting tomorrow, then um, uh, outside litigation council will be uh, taking all necessary uh, legal action to protect the, uh, the mud and woodlands waters assets throughout the community. I uh, don't want to get too much into legal strategy and open session, but um, we will be taking the action necessary to protect the district's assets. Uh, this, um, this is John. Are they coming into Grogan's Mill? They're throughout the woodlands. Uh, yeah, but I haven't seen them up front yet, so I just wondered whether uh, we're, we're on the list. Yeah, Jim and Mike, do you, yeah, do you know John, this if is they've made their way there yet? Yes, sir. John, this is Mike. They, uh, I understand they hit a line on Nursery Road today. Mm. I don't know if it's in Mud 36 or Mud 6, but they hit a in a line today in mud uh, in on nursery road. <laughs> what, what kind of what kind of line was it, Mike? This is Mike. It was it was a uh, house service line from the, from the main to the meter. Hmm. Um. So this is Brian. That's all I've got under the attorney's report. But happy to answer any other questions you may have. Any questions for Brian? All right, then we will move on to item. Thank you, Brian. We'll move on to item 11. Consider an act on modifying how the maximum sewer volume is calculated for water bills issued from February 2021 to February 2022. Uh, during the, the freeze or um, I sent out a, a memo to the directors that we were in the middle of calculating water bills. We had uh, a whole uh, large number of homes that had leaks uh, from broken pipes, frozen pipes during the leak, uh, during the freeze. Uh, obviously those homes were experiencing much higher water volumes than they typically would. And uh, as it turns out, February is the time of the year that our billing system recalculates the maximum sewer volume for every home for the for the coming year. Uh, we look at December, January, and February uh, usage and do a recalculation and, and, and average that amount, and that's the maximum sewer volume. We uh, made a decision not to use February's consumption because in the interest of trying to be fair and reasonable with our customers, that would have skewed their sewer volume for a full year. So we calculated the water bills based on last year's sewer average or water average. And I'm re requesting that we be authorized to utilize that same number for, the, for this coming year uh, and recalculate sewer volumes next year based on December, January and February usage. So we'd have a new sewer average in February of 2022. And I think this is, it's overall to the Woodlands fair to the customer. It ha almost has no impact on your sewer revenue because we, we tell the River Authority what to bill us. And sewer volumes really don't change sewer averages much each year. When we recalculate for the average customer, it's somewhere in the four to 7,000 range. So it's not a, a substantial or a meaningful impact on your revenue. And we're requesting that uh, you authorize us to use that same number going forward for this year. And we had also talked about in that email, we may be uh, requesting some streamlining or modifications to what we call RNS 14, our adjustment policy. 
but in visiting with our water billing staff, we, we think we can handle the adjustments in the, the manner which is laid out in the policy for water adjustments. So we're not requesting any tweaks or, or modifications to that policy at this time. I make a motion. I make a motion that we um, agree with what Jim has asked for in uh, the sewer billing uh, methodology, and we go forward that way. John York's made the motion. Is there a second? I second. This is Mamie. All right. The motion has been made and seconded. We'll now do a roll call vote. Scott Haynes, aye. Jan Price, aye. Mamie Paul, aye. John yours, aye. Motion, motion is uh, approved. Item 12, receive information from River Authority staff regarding review of groundwater surface water delivery ratio for fiscal year 2022. Evening everyone, this is Ron Kelling, SRA. Um, on page 20 of your uh, packet, is a memo from the uh, Groundwater Surface Water Committee uh, from May of last year, in which they identified some things to move forward with. And one of those is to review the groundwater surface water delivery ratio annually. And so on page 21 of your packet uh, is a, a simple one page calculation um, to, to, for that comparison. First of all, a couple of things is we, I use the fiscal year 21 budget and rate data because right now we're in the middle of working on our fiscal year 22 budget. So we don't have those rates. We don't have those numbers available. So this is based on fiscal year 21. Made the assumption of 65% groundwater, 35% service, which you have now. And as you, as you aware, the, the MUDs charge their, their individual customers uh, the blended rate of $2.88, which pays for the GRP uh, portion. So if an average Woodlands household, retail, uh, residential customer, uses 10,000 gallons in a month, then their blended rate fee is $28.80. Now, if the Woodlands would like to go to 50% groundwater, 50% groundwater, 50% service water, we would have to develop a, a, a unique rate so that the, because we're gonna keep in our fiscal year 22 budget, we're still gonna have our plant run at 12 MGD, which basically has everybody who's receiving surface water at 35%. But if we need to increase the capacity or increase the production of that plant uh, to get the woodlands up to 50%, then the woodlands needs to pay for those costs to ramp it up. And that's basically chemical power uh, and the cost of raw water and some miscellaneous things. And that also includes GAC. If we take those costs and wrap them together, we increase the blended rate then the, each residential customer who gets 10,000 gallons per month, their bill would be $31.10. The difference is $2.30. So the question being posed to the, to the MUDs this, this week is, are y'all interested enough to desire to move forward in considering a special rate in which it would increase your surface water allocation from 35% to 50%, knowing that it would potentially cost your customers an additional rough order of magnitude, $2.30 per month to get the surface water. Uh, we're not asking for a commitment to that. We're just asking what would, which direction do you wanna give your trustees to let us know so that we can move forward in our budgeting process and develop this rate we would anticipate that the GRP rates and budget will be approved by the review committee in May. So we would know what that number is in May. Then we would bring it to you in either May or June, and you could then decide whether or not you want to incorporate that in your fiscal year, your Woodlands Division fiscal year 
2022 budget. So this is not a final commitment. This is a, it's, it's just a, are y'all interested enough to, to do this? Um, and so that's, that's the question posed. And, and also if you in June or whenever uh, do want to go to 50%, it's only for a fiscal year. It's, it's not a long-term commitment. It's just, do you for the next fiscal year want us to budget for that? So, uh, um, I think oh, this is Scott. I think you're asking to change from 65% service water to 50% service water. No, you're currently at 35% service water. And we want to know if you want to go to 50% service water. So we're at 65% groundwater? Yes. Yeah, the, this is John. Uh, the issue, I think, is if you look at PAM 13, uh, when we went from 50-50 to 65-35, we've started to see a little bit of subsidence or the potential of a little bit of subsidence to reoccur. And I think last summer, the trustees went through a lot of discussion about whether or not we should go back to 50-50, knowing that it might cost us a little bit more uh, to do that. But it, it, the appearance of the reappearance of subsidence is very concerning, and the and the way you address that is we have to go back and reduce the groundwater we're drawing from the Evangeline. When we when we were on fifty fifty, we were drawing about two hundred million gallons a year, I believe, from the Evangeline, and now we're up to about three hundred and something. Uh, so it's drifted up a little bit. By going back to a 50-50 mix, we can take some pressure off the Evangeline, and the belief is that that will that will stymie subsidence uh, that appears to well, it appears to be reoccurring. Right, and as as John was saying, if you go back to 2015, your water levels were declining, and you were dropping down at a rate on subsidence and we leveled out when we got to 2016 and started delivering service water as John mentioned. The, the, the one thing we need to be aware of also is when, when that happened, your neighbors who are receiving surface water were also all on 65% surface water, 35% groundwater, and then we went to 50-50. And then we went to 35, 65, two years ago. If you decide to go to 50-50, you won't necessarily bounce back up to no subsidence because your neighbors are still going to be at 35% surface water, 65% groundwater. Uh, it won't be also, we're going to offer it to them, but I doubt if they take it. Southern Montgomery County Mud, Oak Ridge North, Rayford Road, Though, though y'all were all in the boat together getting that 65 or 50% blend. If you do this, like I said, they probably won't be. And so you'd be, you would be separate and you may not receive the same benefits from going to surface water as the others, but you would receive benefits. You just wouldn't receive as much as if, if your neighbors would go to 50, 50-50 uh, blend. This is Scott. First of all, I'm a little embarrassed that I did not realize that. I should have been aware of that. It shows that I had not read my packet as well as I should have. So first of all, I apologize about that. But this is only talking about budgeting. The actual blend of the water that's delivered is, is not what we're talking about. We're talking about how it's budgeted. Correct, Ron? Correct. I mean, right now through... Uh, through February, you actually have been receiving about 53% surface water and 47% groundwater. Yeah. But the reason for that is that uh, Chris was very conscientious at the end of the year not to bust the groundwater permit. And so they were given more surface water in the last month of the year uh, and raise that bl blend ratio up so that we wouldn't take as much groundwater to have to pay a penalty to the Lone Star. Also, during the winter time, your your ratio because your total demand is lower, you have a much higher ratio of surface water. When we get into May, June, July, you may hit 
30% uh, or 20% surface water just because the amount of water you're using is so large. So that 53% ratio you have now is going to drop down uh, over the summer. It's a very weather dependent uh, issue. Well, this is Scott. Uh, do we need to do a straw poll here to, for this? Uh, Brian, what, what does the board do to give them direction for their budget? Was well, basically to give Jan direction for the trustee meeting for April. Right. I, I make, this is John, I make a motion that we ask Jan to support the 50-50 mix uh as it comes up in april this this is my me i second motion has been made and seconded we will now vote on it scott haynes aye jan price aye baby paul aye john yours aye okay great and this is jan they have a question i have a question um the other districts doing this or do we know yeah um i i, I kept to count uh, all except for one were in favor of it and and, and that one was kind of they weren't really against or for they hadn't really decided okay now i have another question um you mentioned budgeting in may you would know uh figure is there a potential for your increasing our basic water rates again this year, in addition to the two dollars and thirty cents? There's that possibility, and Chris, I know Chris has been more working on those rates than I have. Chris, we're not ready for that yet, but right. you have a tendency to know which direction we're going, right? Yeah, there's uh, for Woodlands. You're probably looking at at least a three percent, just because the project plan that was presented shows a uh, $500,000 increase each year to continue funding the maintenance. And that's roughly a 3% increase, but we are pretty early in the process to determine what it actually is. But I understand a, a roughly 3% increase and then that's in addition to the $2.30 for the 50-50 blend. <laughs> well, and, and that, again, that two thirty is based on 21. Uh, right. Budget of GRP, as we mentioned before, uh, I'm, I'm not sure where the GRP is going to end up, but um, they need to have a rate increase. I just don't not sure if that's where we'll end up. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll find out. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Any more discussion? If not, we'll move to item 13, receive the general manager's report. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I'm going to review a number of items from our trustee meeting. Um, we had a spirited discussion regarding the feasibility study the River Authority has been uh, talking about with the trustees for wastewater consolidation. Um, I'm going to try to summarize what I took away from it is they wanted more information in particular about how public engagement, uh, stakeholder engagement, what that might look like. Uh, and we're going to bring it back in April to, with some more information and discuss it again. We also had a, a uh, instructions to, to reach out to the Woodlands Township, which we have done. We'll be sitting down with their leadership and their staff to talk about this topic and get some feedback from them that we'll be, we'll be able to share next month with the trustees also. Uh, the SJRA did submit their 10-year project plan which includes about $180 million in needed uh, repair and rehab. Uh, this topic was, uh, the discussions began on this back in December with our uh, audit committee and got a little bit uh, delayed because of the topic on consolidation. So we're gonna have to revisit this with the audit committee and look at funding options for this. Uh, and I mean, I, just to be candid, these type of numbers will probably be bond financed. It's just how it will be financed and over what, what groupings and uh, how it will impact resident rates, retail rates and wholesale rates. So more to come on this. Um, MCAD is looking for 
special purpose district candidates. If you know anybody or any of our MUD directors that are interested in filing for that uh, opening, let us know. Uh, we had a request to start meeting again from one MUD in person. And uh, I reported to the trustees that I would prefer and hold off on having in-person meetings till we can get a consensus from most or all of our MUD districts. I don't wanna have a, a uh, mixture of some MUDs meeting in person, others meeting uh, remotely via Zoom. So let's give this a month or two and see how it plays out. Uh, we may see the governor lifting the waiver we're working under now where we have to go back into person, but I'd rather wait if, if we don't, have to meet in person, I'd like to do it where, where we have a consensus with the MUDs and not a mixture of some doing in person and others not. Uh, MCAT also reported that because of the disaster declaration, property owners uh, will be eligible for a temporary disaster relief on their appraised value. So we may see some of those coming in based on damages that were incurred by residents or businesses. Uh, SJRA has offered a tour of their SCADA system. One director requested to see that and uh, Ron and I talked and thought it would be a good idea for others to see it. So Shelly will be sending out a date and time uh, question or off or invite to see if others would like to see the SCADA system at the SJRA plant. Uh, Lone Star Groundwater District as I reported last month, is reaching out to various stake, what they call stakeholders to sit down in kind of an informal setting with uh, a few of their board members. Uh, President Eric Hurd has uh, selected John Yours, uh, Neil Gaynor, Laura Norton to sit, and he and Eric to sit with this group. So uh, we're working on setting that, that time and date and we'll be reporting back after that meeting occurs. Um, AMI polls. Um, I'm still working with two neighborhoods, one or uh, two homeowner, groups of home, homeowners, one near Slash Pine and the other near Lake Woodlands Drive and uh, Woodlands Parkway that are uh, have concerns, strong concerns about the polls that were constructed for our AMI system. Um, I, I'm their preference is to move those poles to another location out of their view of site. Uh, I haven't finished that analysis yet. Uh, in your packet, I've given you a couple of things that we're able to get some numbers on. Painting, uh, camouflage, putting in camouflage poles. Uh, and uh, I think one of them was putting in a new pole that's been powder coated. But uh, the residents are firm that they want them to see the option of relocating those poles and it's just a, a much more detailed analysis than I've been able to get done with all the things that are going on. But we will be trying to get that wrapped up and maybe bring it back to you next month. Scott, you wanna offer some comments on that at this point? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, this is Scott. Uh, one of the residents that live in um, near there are former neighbors of ours who we've known since the 30 years I've lived in my 36. They are, one of them is a for, work for the post office. The other one work for actually for Mitchell Energy. Um, they're fine people and they don't usually get upset about things. And I say upset, that's not, they don't raise issues unless it's important to them. And they are very much uh, a opinionated about these polls. I have another friend of mine who asked me about it and he and I have talked a little bit. He's not quite so adamant about the action needs to be performed. But I think for everyone you hear about or talk to, there's others that are uh, equally concerned that just don't bring that up to, to, the, to our issue. I, we need, I, in my opinion, we need to do something. Um, uh, Within a few months, when the leaves are back on these trees, this is just me talking, they will not be as visible. But I don't think that's an option we need to push or try to suggest that, you know, simmer down, everything will be fine in a couple of months. I'm not even suggesting that. But it, I do think we do need, uh, it's, in my opinion, we're going to need to do something. Uh, whether it's just paint it uh, or, or whatever i'm not i'm gonna wait till what the staff wait till jim had a chance to review it but i think i it's my opinion we need to do something 
So um, we, I, in my opinion, I look forward to hearing more information, Jim, once you had a chance to do a, more investigation. And again, just we are looking at a relocation option, but it's, uh, you know, we if we're going to relocate, we want to relocate to where site distance from any other residents so is not an issue. And it's tough to find a, a, a location that works and that have, meets all the parameters. So that's an ongoing effort. And, and as soon as we can either say there is another site or there isn't, we'll put all the options in front of the boards to look at. Uh, I, Jim is Scott again. Does it have to be a hundred? Please look into, does it have to be 125 feet in height? That, that's, that, that's an option we need to look into. Does it have to be that tall? I don't know. At this, at this you may already know, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it does at this location to get the coverage we need. But if we go to another location, if we can find one, uh, yeah. I'll look at it at that point. So please consider, please find out, look into that too. Okay. Um, and then uh, Brian Yates mentioned PACUS. That's that's a really a big challenge for us. Uh, at least a hundred uh, damage to service lines or water mains uh, since January. Well over a hundred thousand in damages. Uh, we've got a meeting with them tomorrow. We'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, Woodlands Water Agency trustees voted to do a refunding to the MUDs from the reserve account. Uh, we have a, a, a uh, policy or a resolution in place that every year after the, after the audit's done, we look at the reserves. If it's over a certain threshold, we rebate a certain amount back to the MUDs. So in your packet is that breakdown. There's also a HARC monthly report uh, answer questions if you have any on that. And then a number of compliment emails from residents uh, for my response to them during the freeze. I'm just going to emphasize that was a very difficult event, especially for our field guys. Even our office uh, staff pitched in. Our emergency answering system went down. We were routing calls to individual employees at their homes trying to keep up with the influx of requests for service. We, I think we made, made it through uh, in, a, in a pretty good fashion. The River Authority did a great job of keeping their pressure up and no boil water notice like many other utilities. So uh, at this point, uh, I can say this event's kind of in our rear view mirror and TACUS is the challenge at hand today. And that concludes my report. Jim, this is Scott. Um, are the lines that are being damaged, are they the lines from the meters to the house or are they the water lines that are the, the, the district's water line? It's mostly district service tubing. We, we have a little a, a tube, an inch, I think inch or inch and a half that we run from the main up to the meter. Uh, and that's a district facility. That's what the predominant failure is occurring. We are getting damage to the mains, the, the large, you know, six inch, eight inch, 10 inch pipes in the ground. Uh, they are breaking residents, irrigation systems, resident service, it's a hodgepodge. But what we're, the, the biggest expense we're incurring is our facilities and having to go and repair those. It's creating havoc to say the least with our repair crews and our contractors and Communication, trying to communicate with people when, when we're having these breaks and outages, it's uh, very difficult. The reason I ask that, y'all are aware of these insurance outfits that send out letters to residents and say that you can, they can pay a fee or pay an insurance fee for damages to their water lines. Mm -hmm. For the most part, from people contact me, I've told them, it's not necessary. Now, if they if they break these water residential water lines, that's not sprinkler system. Then they may come to these friends may come to me and go, "I thought you said I didn't need it." And I'm um, so if that's the case that they break the line from the meter to the house, why does their um, 
source of uh, repair? I mean, why can, why can these res are they going to have to get it fixed and then go to these people that are breaking it or what, what can be done? If they're breaking the resident service line, they're fixing it. They're, they claim they have a licensed plumber on staff that is there to fix that. Right. Right. Because as we know, I only worry about what impacts me in this mud district. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. I appreciate it. Hey, Jim, I got one word for you. Taxcom. What's up? Have we found anything see, out yet? I spoke with the lead attorney. Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, arguing that case on behalf of Montgomery County. And uh, the article is correct. If they lose this appeal in the Supreme Court, it's a done deal. Okay. Texcom will be uh, injecting. And Brian, we're we are reviewing the status of this as it goes up, goes on, correct? It, it's reached the end of the, the rope, essentially. Okay. Yeah, this is Brian. That's correct. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions for Jim? If not, we will move back to item 14 to follow up on discuss water and sewer rates. And John, you were having some good points about this. We discussed it earlier in the, in the meeting. Yeah, I, th I think we need for Jim and Maureen to come up with uh, some kind of a plan that gets us to where uh, on a monthly basis, we've got more uh, revenue than expenses. And it, uh, it just looks to me when I look at the financials for the next eight months, we're going to be running a deficit. So um, I would ask Jim and Maureen for next month to make, you know, give us an idea of what, what we can do on the, the rates. You know, I proposed uh, earlier that we raise, uh, you know, the people that have the second meter for their pool and sprinklers, that we raise their rates. Uh, we make a tweak to the sewer rate on the base maybe, but we stay away from the lower rates to help out the uh, the elderly people in the community and the, and the low volume user, but we, we raise the, uh, the premium to the high volume users and, uh, and let them pay a little bit more. So I think there's a lot of things we can do uh, with tweaking the rates. We can raise the commercial rates. Uh, I have no problem with raising those uh, and that stays away from the residents too. So I would ask Jim and Marine to take a good look at that and help us get back to a, a monthly position where we're earning a little bit of money beyond what we're spending. And, and actually, I think Maureen may can uh, offer a couple of comments. We did t make a deep dive into some calculations, and uh, Maureen found that she was able to adjust something where it's looking better. Uh, Maureen, do you want to help out? Well, we uh, realized that the report calculating the sewer average was not giving me the right number, so we did adjust January and February. Um, but yeah, we can certainly... definitely look more at, at what the bottom line is with the water and sewer rate versus expense. But even with that adjustment, we're running short. We'll, we'll uh, take a look at it and report back. Okay, thanks. We will look forward to uh, getting that information soon. Uh, item 15, receive the Woodlands Water Trustees Report. Hello, Jan. Hi, everybody. That's on pages 42 to 45. A lot of detail in here. We've covered a lot of this. Um, Jim has done a great job, as usual, covering all this. Um, I don't really have except one thing to add. As you'll, you'll see, there's a, the public comments over here. There's a variety of different things, and I think that's a thing that the public is, is um, coming in with their ideas and their um, concerns to the uh, Woodlands Water Board. It's been years since that's happened, if it ever did before. Um, I, I would just add that um, the meetings have been running really long. <laughs> they start at six and I don't think there's been, since November, there's been one that was out before eight or quarter to eight and some of them, a couple of them longer than that. And so I made the suggestion that we, um, we um, start meeting at five o'clock for the Woodlands Water Trustees meeting. 
And I think it was originally, at least, it seemed like that there was a pretty favorable uh, response to that. So I think there'll be an agenda item next month on the agenda to vote on that. I don't think it would affect, affect any our, our mud board particularly, but if, if anybody has any questions or concerns about that, I'll be happy to listen to it. And any questions on this um, report? I, yeah, yeah, I'm sure the, the uh, board wants to move it up to five as long as they don't last till eight, continue lasting till eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll have to move it up to four. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions for Jane? Jane, I, I got a, just a general question. Why, what's the uh, the board general flavor for the uh, proposed um, action on the water water treatment plants? Is there any kind of, is there any kind of, you know, is it swinging one way or the other right now or everybody just want to get the result, get the information before they come up with a decision? I think most people just want to see the results of the, um, okay. the um, survey, that thing that they're going to do. Um, I, I, I think it's a little early because people are yeah. still getting information right. right now. Well, I would ask you, on a sidebar, if we were all in one room, that's why I'm having to ask you like this. So, I'm sorry. Um, what was I would have asked you in the room if we were all in the boardroom that question, but I'm trying to do it just to see what. I'm sure I'm glad to hear everybody's interested in getting the results. Oh yeah, they're interested. Okay. Uh, item 16: Discussing matters for placement or future agenda. If not, we'll uh, see if we are all still on Zoom next month or, or not. Thank you all very much for coming tonight. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, Scott.